Good evening and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James. I'm myself, Stephen George. Good evening. Good evening. It's Sunday, the 16th of September, 2018. And we have a few things uh, to talk about tonight. We have a great guest on, Walter Graham. Walter is a good friend of OAM's. Walter has been on the show uh, a good few times. And any time we get him on, we always have loads and loads to talk about. So looking forward to chatting with Walter in a few minutes. But for the moment, let's find out what the communication channels are. Okay, communication channels. The communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046 927 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room. Yes, the OYM chat room is uh, on the website. If you have a username and password, you can log. <coughs> excuse me, you can log into the chat room there. Uh, and a big hi to everyone who's already logged in there at the moment. You're all very welcome. We're also streaming on People's Internet Radio, uh, People's Internet Radio dot com. And again, hi to everyone who's also logged into the chat room over there. You're almost very welcome. And uh, that is the place to be if you want to ask questions for our special guest Walter Graham this evening. You can also ring in if you fancy it. The phone line is zero four six nine two seven one two one two, or if you're ringing from outside the Republic of Ireland, it's zero. Zero zero three five three four six nine two seven one two one two. All the contact details and the phone number can be found on the front of the website oimradio.com, where you will also see the links for the um, the YouTube channel, the Skype, the anti-social media, Facebook, Twitter. And the newest edition, uh, MeWe. Uh, MeWe is a kind of a, a, a new version of, well, it's kind of what Facebook should be. So MeWe is kind of a Facebook without the ads and without the profiling and without the data mining. So if you want to be friends with us over there, do, do check out our, Me, our MeWe page. Uh, also on the website there, you will see links for the TuneIn Radio app. That's a free app where you can uh, download, stick it on your smartphone, your iPhone, your tablet, uh, or your PC. And you can listen to us all day, every day. And as we do say, info at oymradio.com is the email address, the all-important email address. And if you're a first-time listener or a long-time listener and you just want to say hi, let us know where you're listening from, what you think of the show, then fire us off an email. Thank you. Brilliant stuff. Right, Steve, you're going to kick us off. I'm going to kick us off. Yes, we have some some news from the telegraph.co.uk. And it says, chemotherapy warning as hundreds die from cancer fighting drugs. Uh, patients should be warned, it says, about the dangers of chemotherapy after research showed that cancer drugs are killing up to 50% of patients in some hospitals. Uh, for the first time, researchers looked at the numbers of cancer patients who died within 30 days of starting chemo, which indicates that the medication is the cause of death rather than the cancer. The study by Public Health England and Cancer Research UK found that across England, around 8.4% of patients with lung cancer and 2.4% of breast cancer patients died within one month. Uh, but in some hospitals, the figure well, the figures were higher. In Milton Keynes, the death rate for lung cancer treatment was 50.9%, although it was based on a very small number of patients. Scary stuff. Exactly. Now, the full article is obviously on the Telegraph. And I think in there they're trying to justify it somewhere down the line, but I think OAM listeners that have been tuned in for a long time to our shows know uh, the story with chemotherapy. And we've had uh, qualified medical doctors on the show talking about it and telling us about it. So, um, yeah, uh, just a word of warning from that side. Okay. Um, the journal that I.E. Um, what mentioned uh, six people were arrested last week after housing activists were removed from a vacant house on North Frederick Street in Dublin. A private company called to the property at 34 North Frederick Street this evening to remove the activists who have been defying a court order to remain in the building for a number of weeks. The order was issued on the 28th of August when the High Court ordered that all persons occupying the house vacated by 2pm the following day. Justice Michael Quinn granted Patricia de Grally, the owner of 34 North Frederick Street, Dublin 1, injunctions requiring persons unknown to vacate and seize trespassing and get out of the four-storey building. Next sheet. Um, it was not immediately clear who the private company were acting on behalf of, but a number of individuals had their faces covered, as did members of the Gardaí Public Order Unit when they were also when they turned up on site. Apparently, the security company who came in a van with the Gardaí had no rage, no tax, no insurance, and they were wearing balaclavas. They were actually all wearing balaclavas. The 
the Balatla- the Gardi were wearing Bar- balaclavas, and the the men that turned up, who apparently fought, were from the north. They weren't Irish. They were from the they from the from Northern Ireland, and they weren't from the Republic. And they came obviously with balaclavas on, and they they were being protect- protected by the Gardi. And um, this is where our society is going to, folks. This is it. This is the Land League uh, from the late 1800s, Michael David, all over again. The same thing is happening. Thugs are turning up to um, kick people out of their, their premises. Um, and I, if you haven't seen it, go and check it out. It's just completely disgraceful. In 2018, to have this behaviour going on. These are the people that people are voting for. These mainstream parties, Fine Gael, Fine Foil, um, Sinn Féin, I'm going to put in there as well, and Labour. I mean, seriously, I mean, 2018, and we having people turn up in balaclavas to evict people. You know, it's unbelievable the way society is going. But um, it's um, the, the, there is an argument that people turn around and say that oh, then people shouldn't have been in the building. They were making a protest, and you know, regardless whether they were protesting, that could be anybody. That could be any eviction. That was just one of many. So it's just the state of affairs of what's going on. It's just completely disgraceful. Now, what's going to happen next week, just to let you know, is that we're going to do an actual round table show with Liam Deegan and the friends. Um, and I think he's going to try and get a councillor on from Dublin to talk about this and what's going on in the state of Ireland and what's happening. So that's going to be a good show to tune into um, to find out you know, their thoughts on the subject matter. Steve. Yeah, Daily Star.co.uk reports that evacu- evacuation of solar observatory uh, as joint object spotted next to the sun. Yeah, the solar observatory was shut down as a huge UFO slash joint object was captured on sun feed before it was actually closed down by the FBI. Uh, a massive UFO appeared in live footage of the sun before the FD- FBI dramatically shut down the National Solar Observatory. Uh, conspiracy theorists claim uh, employees at the site in Sunspot, New Mexico, were forced to leave as agents rushed to the research centre last Thursday. The building remains on lockdown, surrounded by yellow tape, with no time frame given to local police as to when it will reopen. Uh, Tyler Glockner, who runs the YouTube conspiracy channel Secure Team 10, speculated that observers may have come across uh, extraterrestrial life while picturing the sun. Tyler claimed the FBI would have been brought in to remove any evidence of this. Wow. It's, it's, this has been gone over the internet the last few days and there's been a number of observatories closed down and people have said, oh don't worry about it, what was was that it was a Chinese ring, a Chinese um, spying on the Americans um, and that's why they closed it down. I mean, it's a bit lame, that excuse, to be honest with you. Um, you think they'd be more well protected and covered by by uh, by that, having, allowing that in. Now, um, so we don't know. It's speculation at the moment. There's videos out there showing the footage of what was captured. And maybe they did see something that they shouldn't have, shouldn't have seen or they weren't supposed to see. But a number of observatories and a local post office was closed down. As I say, there's a lot of speculation out there as to what's going on, um, but it's interesting looking at the footage. Something was seen anyway. I think something was seen. We don't know what it is, but something was seen. And um, so keep an open mind, as we always say. How's your week, Steve? Yeah, not too much to report from my week actually. Um, that that kind of that forced eviction has been the kind of the big thing. It's all over Facebook and social media. Um, unfortunately, uh, a lot of the people who uh, who are who are kind of sharing this information and, and asking their friends and family to, uh, to watch it? It's kind of going. It's falling on deaf ears or deaf eyes or blind eyes or wh- whatever the saying is, um, because a lot of people just you know when they see something like that they just skip it. Because I think even when people are kind of going through their social media feed, they don't want to be reading real stories that may affect them or someone close to them. They just want to see the picture of the fluffy cat and they just want to see kind of uh, the, the happy feel good stories. No one wants to see what's actually happening happening in the country which is an absolute shame um, so I don't know if there's any other way we can we can get this information and share it with people and let them see exactly is what happening or what is happening uh, in the country as Alan mentioned there it was kind of balaclavas at dawn and I think that's wrong it's wrong that people it's bad enough that when the politicians are committing crimes and they're getting kind of a uh, 
safeguarded I suppose by the judicial system but now you have crimes against ordinary people who are standing up for the rights of other ordinary people and the Gardaí are standing by and protecting those who are doing these forced evictions and uh, I, I did see some video footage of it now I, uh, I'm guessing there's probably a lot more video footage knocking about and um, it's only a matter of time before they, they they turn nasty and I'm sure there will be a lot of violence and bloodshed and again it'll be you know one word against, or you know, your word against the Gardaí, and uh, of course the Gardaí will be believed every time. And so it's a shocking state of affairs that this is allowed to continue uh, in 2018. As Alan said, this happened 100 years ago, and it's still continuing today. And no one really seems to do anything about it. And uh, we, we can't expect RTE to tell us what's happening anyway. And somebody said to me, just on, on that regarding the eviction, somebody said, oh, but they brought in a bill to stop the banks from doing evictions. Um, well, that might have been the case, but what they, what the banks are now doing to get over that loophole um, is to actually sell the uh, the property on a, to you know pennies on the pound to vulture funds because the bill doesn't cover vulture funds; it only covers banks. So the vulture funds are going on, going in and causing and uh, making the evictions. Uh, so the banks are kind of getting away with it, and that's how they're kind of getting around that um, ruling or billing or that bill in the in the actual. Uh, in the government um, so that's what's happening so uh, you know they're selling out and yeah. selling to vulture funds yeah I was actually out and about this morning with my wife and we were kind of we were across the border uh, into County Kildare and uh, we did see a big sign it was a field there and there was huge signs erected around this field and it actually said on it forced forced sale uh, and it was I think there was a, an IFA which is the Irish Farmers Association logo on one of these posters so maybe the IFA are starting to wake up as well and smell the roses uh, but this obviously this was uh, obviously a piece of land that was being forced forced for sale I suppose um, don't know too much more about it but you know uh, it, it's 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 happening it's not just happening like in other parts of the country it's happening on our doorstep as well um, and the oh yeah the one other thing I want to mention is uh, the village where, where I live they had a, a little festival there today and they do it every year and um, it's it's great it brings communities together it puts the unity in community I suppose and uh, it'd be nice if all, no, a lot of other co- communities are you know uh, around the country done the same and uh, this is run by Mead Potatoes. I'm not sponsoring or plugging Mead Potatoes, but uh, they come along every year and they uh, they they bring in prizes of hampers and, and all sorts of goodies for the, for children. And uh, it's a gr- it's a great day, I have to say. Uh, so yeah, we were at that today and thoroughly enjoyed it. And the last thing I want to say, um, do you know, have you seen the advertisement on TV for the movie The Nun? And um, that's the horror movie. Yes, it? it is. Okay. Yes. Do you like horror films? No, no, I do. Yeah. Okay. I love horror films. I, I can't get enough horror films. Mm-hmm. I was rare on horror films. Uh, so we went to see The Nun last night. And I have to say, it was the biggest load of rubbish. And and that's that's kind of compliment the film, I have to say. It was the biggest load of rubbish I've seen in a long time. It's like as if they're just churning out films. And, you know, there was whatever, whatever you've seen on TV, on the advertisement, that, they were kind of the scary parts. And when you're actually in the cinema and you look at them kind of in, in the context of the film, it wasn't actually that scary. Mm. Uh, a lot of people actually were were talking through the film when we were there, um, and I was talking to one of the one of the staff in the cinema afterwards, and he said, "What do you think of it?" And I said, "Biggest load of rubbish." And he said, "Yeah, I have to agree." He said, "I've seen it as well," and he says, uh, "Yeah, they're they're just churning out any old rubbish." So uh, there we go. They so yeah, they do, they do the same effects all the time. Same do, effects. Same effects. And this all the this time. was very dark. You know, it was it was kind of set. Uh, most of the, the 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 stuff kind of happened in the dark. You know, as they do. But uh, yeah, if you're thinking if you like horror films and you're thinking about going to see it, um, not that I'm kind of we're, we're doing critiquing films now, but uh, don't waste your money. Wait till it comes out on DVD or something. Mm. There you go. Done okay. and dusted. How's your week? Okay, not too bad. Just uh, one thing before we bring Walter in. And just a word of warning, um, the OAM mobile phone number is now non-existent. Um, because obviously after a period of time, if you don't top up, Vodafone automatically um, shut down the actual mobile number and send it into recycling. So I was on the phone to, well I was on the chat to Vodafone. And I said, look, I can understand that, not a problem at all. Can you give me my credit back? Because we had credit on the phone. And I said, oh, no, 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 that just goes in and gets recycled again. I said, no, 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 that's not your money, that's my money. I said, I can understand the phone um, number being recycled, but that's my credit. You either give me that back or pass it over to another account that I have. 
And they said, no, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. That's not the way the system works, Daddy. So anyway, I might have been speaking to a, a brick wall. So just a word of warning that Vodafone, being thieving baskets that they are, that's what they do. So if you have credit on your phone and you don't use your phone for a period of time, obviously they will recycle them. But I don't, don't have a problem with that. But they actually rob your money as well. They rob the money that you paid for credit. And that is your money. And that's what they do. So just keep that in mind, folks, that if you do have a phone that you only use for receiving calls or the odd text message and you don't top up, that if you have credit on the phone, I can understand them taking the number. That's no problem at all. It wasn't used. But the fact that you, you, when you pay money for credit, that's money that's being paid. And that should go back to you. So, you know, shame on Vodafone. And, uh, you know, maybe I will pursue this a bit more. I don't know. We'll see. Um, no point talking to the people on the chat because, well, that's probably an AI system anyway. So I'm not actually talking to anybody. I'm just talking to a computer. So we need to get somebody on the phone and uh, speak to them. Anyway, without further ado, we're going to get our guest on. Now, Walter's been on the show a good few times over the years. He's a good friend of OAM and um, obviously been down to the studio as well and did a bit, few videos, impromptu videos for us as well, which is brilliant. And we always get updates and... We always seem to run out of time because there's loads that we end up talking about and we never have enough time. And the last interview we did was only it was half a show and uh, we, we ran out of time. So I said, right, the next time we get Walter on, we'll do a full show and we'll talk about everything and anything that needs to be talked about. So we have a full show and we have Walter on. So well for the do, we'll get Walter on. Good evening, Walter. How are you? Hey, how are you guys? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Thanks for coming on. Um, it's great to... Uh, you know, catch up with you again and get an update on what's going on. I know that, you know, um, you know, you've been involved with the fluoride side and we've talking about the, the wireless 5G and what's going on with that. Um, so before we go down that road, can you give mm-hmm. us a, a state of play at the moment with the, the, the fluoride uh, situation in Northern Ireland? Have you done any more with that? Is that put to bed now or is there anything else that you have to do with that? Now, uh, we can't do anything about it at the moment because there's no government. Um, see, that's the problem we're facing up here. Uh, our MLAs are getting all the money, but they don't show up for work. Uh, they don't actually do anything. We can't get anything done. The 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 uh, civil servants are running the place. And, of course, they're hired by the Crown to do what the Crown wants. So we, we can't get any further with any subjects up here. That's just how it is. But on the fluoride front... Um, we did get fluoride stopped in the water supply um, uh, back in, I don't know, was it 2000, I think it was, the, the, we got it stopped. The problem then came that they kept coming back every three years, starting to try and implement it again. I had to then go back into the council, start talking to councillors again, start getting the MLAs up in speed, and they, they then they would pack it in. Uh, but they were persistent. And what they've done is, in Northern Ireland... <clears throat> In uh, 2009, they brought in a stuff called phosphoric acid. And uh, phosphoric acid comes from phosphate rock. Well, so does the fluoride. So I started putting in parliamentary questions at that point. Um, And what they've done is they brought it in as a water additive. You see phosphoric acid? They say they're putting it in because it'll it'll crust over the pipes and stop people who have lead pipes under their house under their houses getting lead in their drinking water. Uh, so they they made this claim. I then started challenging their figures. I started asking for proof of what they had said, and they actually had to admit they had none. So they brought in phosphoric acid. One of the main ingredients in phosphoric acid is fluoride. Okay, that's sneaky. So, Can you just pull it, pull back a little bit on your microphone there? Sure. How's that? That's that's fine. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, yeah. So they 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 snuck it in a back door, and they, you see what happened with them with the fluoridation. They had to go through the councils, so they had to, they gave the councillors uh, in Northern Ireland the, the chance to say yes or no. They asked their opinion. And, of course, when they all said no, then they said, well, we're going to ignore you and we're going to do it anyway. And that's when I started with marches and causing more more trouble for them, got on TV and radio and stuff like that. So it did get stopped at that time. But this is just a water additive, and they don't have to ask anybody's permission. They just have to announce it in a paper, which is what they did. And then they can put it in. Okay, so like down here in in, in the, the, the Republic in the South, 
we would say that the government do not have a medical license to medicate the population, which is what they're doing with the fluoride. Is that not the same up the north? No, because what they're saying is that this this is just a water additive. And they're allowed, the DOE is allowed to put up in any water additive in any quantity they want without getting anybody's permission to do it. Now, I would love to take this up with the MLAs, but they're not here. Yeah. Uh, they, they just got a, a pay cut, or they're getting a pay cut in another month or two to try and encourage them to make some agreements on something. But otherwise, we have no government as far as elected officials. So we're being run by civil servants who've been trying to push this for at least 20 years that I know of. And, and actually, they tried pushing it in the 70s as well, and then again in the 80s. So they've been at this forever, you know, trying to get this in. Yeah. Now they, they've got it in under the guise of, of uh, phosphoric acid. Um, and when I asked, is the phosphoric acid contaminated with lead, arsenic, uranium, uh, mercury, uh, aluminium, Antimony, the answer was yes to all of them, which is exactly what's in the, the stuff you're getting, the, uh, the fluoride that you're getting. Yeah. It's all of those contaminants. So it's the exact same stuff. They just changed the name, uh, slipped it in, calling it phosphoric acid. And by the way, when I looked up online on uh, studies on phosphoric acid, they, it shows that it causes bone fragility in children. And that's why they're questioning it being in soft drinks now. So, so, are you saying that it's actually in your water now, or it's going? They're going to put it in. No, it's in. It's in. It's in it now. Okay. So, word of warning for anybody up the north: don't yep. don't be drinking the tap water because it's bad for you. Yep, for sure. That's that's guaranteed. Um, and certainly now it's got all the contaminants that your stuff has. Um, you know, it's it's just a disaster. Uh, and you know, whenever we got the fluoride stopped. Uh, years ago, we got all these uh, cancer maps mm. for Ireland and all of Ireland, including north and south, comparing. And the south led in every cancer, 18 different cancers that the, that the Irish government studied. Northern Ireland had 40 percent less in most. And in some, it was half, uh, you know, like uh, you, you were double the amount. And, and in one, I think you were even three times the amount. So. Uh, I think uh, pancreatic cancer, um, prostate cancer, uh, leukemia, you led by a lot. You yeah, know? I, I, have, I have seen the map, one of these maps, and the difference between the north and the south, and like we are the same culture, basically. You know, we're we, we, we Sorry, go ahead. We're eating the same food. Yeah, we're eating the same food. I mean, we're basically the same cultures and the same yeah. food. It's not as if it's one, one country and a different country like Greece and Ireland. I mean, yeah. we are the same, and I've seen the map, and it's unbelievable how how many people are being affected by this. Yeah, so, I mean, they, I, I would expect that the next time they do these maps, you're going to find Northern Ireland catching up with you. Yeah, because it's, Florida. It, it's just amazing that, you know, this, again, to 2018, with all the evidence that we have out there, and this argument has been out there in the public, and uh, and people are still... They're still believing what the government is saying, that it's good for your teeth. Yeah, well, I can tell you there's a couple of things happening on all of this. One is that there's a big lawsuit in America that's made it through to the high court, or whatever you call the high court, maybe the Supreme Court, I'm not sure. Yeah. But it's certainly been uh, passed and approved to go to the Supreme Court, I think. Um, a whole group, a group of environmental um, sort of... Uh, campaigning groups have joined together and they've taken a, a lawsuit against the American government. They're making them prove that fluoride is safe, which they can't. It's not possible. There's, there's like four and a half thousand studies showing it's harmful. It's not possible. And there's no study showing it's safe. So they're going to be in trouble if this makes it to court. But they're, they're obviously dragging their heels on it. But it's actually going to make it to court. And once that happens, if they win, it'll come out worldwide. Okay, and where does the FDA stand with fluoride? Um, well, they pass and prove this stuff. Okay. You know, as far as, they're, they, but they see, they're not passing and approving it as a drug, which it obviously is. They're passing and proving it as a cosmetic and toiletry. Yeah. The, 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 when people mention to me, oh, the FDA approved that, or Dave said that um, they don't license that uh, for, for X, Y, and Z reasons. I just don't have time for the FDA because we know what the issue was with vaccines. 
So um, it, you're wasting your time. If people need to do the history of uh, aspartame, and then you get a kind of heads up as to what happened there with the FDA um, in 1984 with uh, Donald Rumsfeld and um, Cyril and aspartame. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, there you go. We're, go. we're going down that road again. Where it's you know yeah. maybe it's padded envelopes, and again. Well, I- uh, yeah, I, I have a, a an anecdotal story to tell you, which I don't think I ever told on air to to you. Anyway, I've told it privately. Um, during the uh, fluoride fight, um, there was a professor uh, of chemistry at a, at a university who came to me and asked me if I could make a public meeting happen. And uh, he wanted to speak out. He said, "Did you know that if fluoride goes in the drinking water, infant mortality rates will go up, and osteoporosis and arthritis will go up?" I said, well, yes, I knew that. How did you know? He said, I did 12 years of fluorine chemistry at Manchester University, and I've been sending in studies to the Northern Ireland government, and they're ignoring all of this. He said, so I want to get a public meeting where I can speak out. So I organized a public meeting in Lurgan. I also got another speaker who was uh, an editor of uh, an angling magazine because he had all the information on it killing fish on contact and... uh, killing deer and things like that. So he was going to talk about the environment and uh, animals. Uh, Now, two days before that meeting, the phone rings, I pick it up, and it's the professor. And he says, I'm not coming. I said, but I did this for you. What are you talking about? He said, "Um, I've been threatened. Now, this is an anecdotal story. Mm. So, you know, take this for what it is. And I said, well, who threatened you? He said, the government. I said, what are they threaten you with? They said, if I speak out at this, I'll lose a £375,000 grant I've been waiting five years for, and it'll mean the, the sacking of everybody in my department. And they told me I'll never work in, in uh, chemistry again. They'll blackball me at every university. That's what he told me. Uh, so he said, I can't come. And I said, well, you can't equate a £375,000 grant with infant mortality rates going up. He said, well, I don't care how you put it. I'm not coming. He hung up. Okay, so I thought, well, at least I got this guy, the, the uh, you know, the editor of the magazine. So I went ahead with the meeting. I get there. No editor. You know, the guy doesn't show. Mm. And I tell the audience, well, you know, this is Ireland. Let's wait. And we waited for another 15 minutes. Finally, I had to get a pharmacist who had a child with dental fluorosis that you could snap his teeth off. You could actually, if he fell down, he broke his bones because he was so fragile because of all the fluoride. He had an uncle who was a dentist and had been coating his teeth continuously with this crap. And and that's what had happened. He had ended up with uh, brittle bone disease. So anyway, she got up and talked for about 10 minutes. Still, this guy didn't show. He was on the posters. His name was there. So I went ahead and I gave a talk. That was the very first talk I ever did mm-hmm. in public on, on, the, on this subject. So I gave the talk. Uh, the newspaper was a local newspaper, but it was part of the Morton Group, I think it was called. They had like 40-some-odd publications, and, and they called me up, or they came. The guy came up, and he said, look, the editors told me we'll be the poster boy for your campaign. Oh, that's tremendous. Wow, because they had a lot of publications. Then I, when I get home, I call up this guy who, the, who was supposed to be there. I said, where were you? He said, I got threatened. I said, who threatened you? He says, I don't know. He said, I got a phone call. He said, and an, an, an English accent said, go check under your car. I went out and checked under the car, and there was a box. And uh, the, the phone rang when he went back in, and he said, the next time, if you speak out, it'll be live. And he hung up. He didn't show. He was too, too scared. Mm-hmm. Then I get a call the day after from the, uh, from the newspaper to say they've been threatened and that they won't be publishing anything to do with fluoride from now on. And I said, who threatened you? Apparently it was the government again. And they said that they would do unlimited litigation against the paper if they published anything to do with fluoride. And they said, even, and, and the editor said, yes, but he proved everything he said. It's all true. He said, this isn't about truth. This is about who has the most money, and we have the public purse, and we'll keep suing you till you stop. That's what I was told. And these people are still around, so I can verify it. But that's what's going on in the background of every subject. 
You know, you better believe it. It's, uh, yeah. Nuclear energy and everything else. There's threats. There's all kinds of intimidation going on at, at all kinds of levels. I believe. Mm. Well, no, so, we can we can uh, we can understand that. I mean, we just mentioned about the eviction process. Um, and yeah. what happened during the week down here, down in Dublin, with the Balaclav at Gardaí and the, the Northern Ireland um, uh, group that came down, uh, which was assisted by the Gardaí to do the eviction. Um, you know, it's it's just unbelievable what's going on. And this is worldwide, obviously not just in Ireland. It's happening in other, other countries. There's so much going on at the moment. And I, I don't know. Um, it's unbelievable that you know, all this is happening. Now, there are shoots of... Good news. I mean, at the end of the day, people need to wake up to what's going on. But the one thing I want to mention as well for people is it's it's not about just being careful about the fluoride in the water. But if there's products being produced in Ireland that are using the water to -hmm. produce the product, you have to be careful as well. Oh, absolutely you do. Um, And uh, especially food products. I mean, a lot of food products are going to have fluoride in it, maybe probably all. Yeah. You can't help it. There's no way around it. Um, once you start using the water supply for anything, you cook, you know, you're going to have it in your spaghetti. You're going to have it in your rice. You're going to have it in your boiled potatoes. It's going to be in every food or drink that you make using the water supply. Yeah. And so you're not just getting that supposed one part per million, which, of course, they can hardly control. Um, you're getting it from everything. And then there's all kinds of other exposures that you get, like from cigarette smoke. Uh, you know, from car exhausts, uh, because when they make unleaded petrol, they use fluoride to bond with the uh, the lead. So it leaves traces of fluoride. So you're getting it from a lot of sources. Then there's a lot of industry sources that are uh, coming out through the smokestacks, you know, like uh, the uh, phosphate fertilizer industry. And the, the likes of uh, the drinks as well that you buy in um, local supermarkets and stuff like that, if they're bottled over here in Ireland, what water are they using to produce them drinks? Of course. And and I think at the time, whenever we started the campaign in the South, um, we had uh, taken some of the drinking products and had them tested. And they were all I think there was a grape juice that came in really high, but there was there was a load of them. You know, every, it was in everything. So it, it's you're really getting hit with an enormous amount of this. It's out of control. There's no way of controlling the amount. Yeah. No, it's it, it, it's amazing how many people you come across that are suffering from um, arthritis and issues with the the bones and aches and pains and everything else. Um, and there's only so much that you know, unless you have an organic garden in your back, in your back, you know, in your backyard, um, and you're growing your own food and you're not buying it from anywhere else but there, and you have a well and everything's filtered. I mean, it's very, very hard to get away from it because, you you know, money's tight for everybody and you end up having to, to buy what you can afford. And, you know, Steve, you want to jump in there? Oh, well, I just want to say I've been kind of listening you know, to people on, on various media and um, kind of following stories and, and what have you. And it's, it seems to me that, and this is just my opinion, uh, and it's not, it's not a nice one, but it seems to me that we're screwed. And that's, you know, that's in, in, the, in the biblical sense of the word screwed. Because if they don't get us through the food, which they're doing anyway, um, then they'll get us through the water. So if we, if we don't eat the food and we don't drink the water, well, obviously we'll die of, uh, of some, you know, we won't, we won't be here very long. Um, but there's uh, the chemtrails as well. Um, and someone said recently, uh, obviously I can't substantiate any of this. I don't know. It could be, it could be all make you be, or it could be true. I don't know. But someone did say recently that there's nano kind of particles getting sprayed in these chemtrails, if you, if you want to call them chemtrails or whatever, whatever the, the technical geoengineering. term is. Geoengineering. The geoengineering. Uh, yeah. So there's nanoparticles allegedly being sprayed in that as well. So if we can't get you through the water and they can't get you through the food, they're going to get you through the air that you breathe. And unfortunately, we can't stop breathing the air. Now, I mean, what do we, are we going to start putting all, um, I can't even think the name of these. Oxygen these, masks. The oxygen masks, yeah. Mm. Uh, are we, uh, unless we, we're going to start wearing those, then um, I think we're screwed. It's definitely a depopulation agenda. And, I mean, even the likes of milks, uh, well, maybe not so much dairy milk, I, I but dairy milk is bad enough. But I, I, was, I communicated, I ran a company there about two years ago. Um, because in my house, they, they're, they either they're drinking soya milk or they're drinking uh, rice milk. And uh, I got onto one of the companies. This stuff was made in the UK, and I asked them um, because there was obviously water in it. And I asked them where do they get, where do you get your water? And I think they told me, oh, we get the water from Thames Water. And I said, well, okay, well, can you find out if that water is fluoridated? And um, 
uh, one company came back to me and said, no, it wasn't fluoridated. And then another company came back and said that they got it from an, another water company. And yes, it was fluoridated. And I said, well, you do know the dangers of fluoride. And uh, they weren't that interested. So that was. But, but yeah. this, this is the funny thing. You know, you have to go and check your sources. Um, Walter, I actually um, checked the, the water from Aldi down here. It's called uh, Cameridge, Cameridge, which is <laughs> it's actually bottled by uh, Celtic Water in Shercock in Cavan. And I actually contacted them and, and spoke to a, a guy who's in there. And they said that they um, had a meeting with Aldi and suggested to Aldi that they put on the water in the bottle that this is, does not contain fluoride. It comes from a natural spring and it'll have natural fluoride, but it won't have the chemical fluoride in it. And they wanted to, Aldi to put that on to let people know that it doesn't contain that fluoride. But Aldi said no. Um, so they said there's nothing they could do. Now, the, the water they sell, they sell their own water. It's called Celtic Water. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I say, the bottling is in Chercock and Cavan. Um, so that's that's the water, and the pH is 7.6 at source. So that's the water I buy. Now, I know it comes in plastic containers. There's not much I can do about that. Um, but uh, down the road, I will want to get a Berkey filter. And the Berkey filter, put the water in it and let it filter through, have fluoride filters. And then, you know, do it that way and just cleanse the water. Maybe have some shungite stones on the bottom um, so you can actually um, benefit from that as well, maybe. But these are things that I want to do down the road, you know, when, when the money's available, it'll be fantastic. Um, but yeah, definitely the food, um, the likes of the cheeses and the beer and the soft drinks, if it's, if it's made or bottled over here, then you have to ask yourself, where did the water come from for them to use or make that product? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, uh, I have whole house filters that take it out take fluoride out um, and take out all the other chemicals as much as I can get out. Um, and then I take it and I put it into a distillation unit for drinking and cooking. So I, I, I don't bathe in this stuff as much as I can. Our clothes aren't washed in it, you know. Um, but it's not everybody can afford to do this, which is the outrage of this. You know, the poorest are going to have to get this stuff. Because there's no way of them bypassing it, you know. They can't afford to get a, a, a even a Britex filter, you know, and it doesn't take it hardly anything out other than chlorine. Yeah, they're, um, they're not that good. I did see no. a talk with Bernadette Bowen, and they had a, a doctor um, there talking about um, the the milk and the fact that they said yes, milk does contain calcium, but also causes osteoporosis and the cows. And um, basically, you know, cow milk is very fattening because obviously you, you fatten the calf. But humans are the only ones that after weaning and um, that carry on drinking milk. All the other animals yeah. stop doing that. But the one thing that they also said there at the talk was to get an actual full filtration system in your house <laughs> would probably cost you between three and four thousand uh, euros, give or take. Um, and you'd need to get the water coming in at the source run it through the filtration system, and then carry that on to the rest of the house? Well, I have to say, mine cost about uh, 300 Oh, that's, so, that's not bad. No, not bad at all. And it, the uh, one filter lasts six months, and the other one does a year. So um, I, it's not the worst. It, you know, but you have to have the money to do it. You know, the same as you're talking about the Berkey. You've, you've got to have the cash for it. Are you getting that water at source as it comes into your house? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's what people need to do because, you know, I, I had the reverse osmosis filter and I had six filters on it, but because the Irish water start um, playing around with the actual water pressure in the local <laughs> area, um, the, the water pressure went down to near enough zero that they it stopped working, and yeah. I would have had to spend a lot more money to get a motor in and change the filters, and it would have cost a lot more money. So in the end, I just thought for now. I'll just go and don't go near the, the water um, for anything got to do with food at all. And we just use the, the Comrade water from Aldi. Um, but down the road, as I say, I want to get a Berkey filter. A distiller is quite good as well. Um, obviously, very good to do that. So anything that gets the fluoride and any chemicals out of the water is really what people need to be looking at. And just be careful. Um, I know that a, a local calf, Steve knows the local calf I'm talking about. Actually, I mentioned it to them about... Um, because we used to get, um, I'm in a men's shed, and that's just uh, men get together once a week and have a cup of tea and a chat. 
and the guys used to bring the tea over from the calf and I used to never drink it because I used to say no it's got fluoride and I'm not interested and then a couple of weeks ago the lady said oh I've got a filter system in there which actually does all the filtering so I said okay that's great that's good news so people are beginning to wake up with it but it's just you know it's just you know the, the war will go on I suppose trying to wake people up for what's out there the one thing I want to talk about as well with you uh, Walter is 5G and yeah. the, the implementation of that. Now, the last time that you were on, I gave you the details of uh, Mark, who was on. He was an industry mm-hmm. in, insider, and I, yeah. I suggested you get in touch with him because the two of you would have a lot to talk about. Yeah. Um, what's the latest news at the moment with 5G? Have you heard anything on that? Well, what I've heard is a, a few things that are really quite disturbing. Um, certainly, uh, if 5G goes ahead, it's it's um, it's going to start harming people very fast. Uh, what we're faced with right now seems to be longer term. You know, it takes a year, two years. Some people get hurt straight away because they start getting, um, you know, headaches and, and uh, nosebleeds and things like that. But with 5G, I, I think it's going to be super fast. We've never been faced with something like this because they're going up into a, a frequency, which is it's, it's coming close to x-rays. It's going up into a frequency that's... Um, penetrative beyond anything we've seen before so this is going to go really deep into us if we if this goes ahead now in gateshead i did spark, speak to uh, mark Steele, um a tremendous warrior if you ask me and a, and, a, and a local hero is what i think um the council have tried to stop him from speaking out and they've taken out an injunction of some kind they've tried to get a um a restraining order to prevent him from speaking about this in public uh, because he's claiming that their streetlights are equipped to do 5G and that they're doing an experiment in his area with this. Now, I don't know what proof he has of that or how it's all going, but I know if if he's willing to go to court, he must have something backing him up. And they've postponed the case, I think, until November, something like that. That's, well, the, that's the last I heard of that. Well, maybe he has the science to back it up. That's probably... Oh, he has somebody behind him or people that, who are experts that will back him up. Oh, of course. And in fact, on, on, uh, he did get a, an expert weighed in on his side who is a, a government, a Canadian government um, expert. So his name is Curtis Bennett, Dr. Curtis Bennett. Um, he's a thermal radiation consultant you know, for like 38 years, something like that. Uh, he also is an advisor to the Canadian government, and he weighed in on Mark's behalf. He wrote in a, a really devastating long letter spelling out all the harm that this will do to the population, that they know it, that there's no testing, you see, because what they've done is they've taken a fluid-filled plastic doll and then they've irradiated it with microwaves. And at the point it begins to cook, they've then backed off by a factor of 10, and that's your safety level. It's based on a fluid-filled plastic doll. We're not pl- plastic fluid-filled dolls. Yeah. Um, this is ridiculous. So there is no science backing up that this is safe at any level, no less the levels they're already giving us. And now they're about to put on 5G. And i got to say, they, they said in the paper that they're going to need 300,000 300, micromasts just to get this whole system up and running. You know, across Britain. Yeah, because the, 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 the signal, it's line of sight and they need to do yes. that. Now, I don't know whether you've um, looked up the, the likes of the use of shungite, Walter. Have you come across shungite? Have you looked at that? I've looked at it. Um, and I, in fact, I, I have some stuff here. Um, in a, uh, it's, it's like formed into a resin that's supposed to have that in it, as far as I know. Uh, okay, because we've, we've had people on um, who are talking about shungite. And um, basically what we were told, Steve... <laughs> I actually have a necklace on at the moment with Shungite and Steve. A man necklace. A man necklace. <laughs> and, and Steve. A pendant, or a pendant, a pendant. And Steve has his in his pocket. Next and to my. Um, next to, next your to my. Crown jewels. Well, yeah. Okay. And uh, basically, what we were told with the science of the Shungite is that um, in uh, the likes of, in nature, vortexes are clockwise. But when man, the likes of Wi-Fi and 5G and all these, when man makes something, it t- tends to be anti-clockwise. And what Shungite does, one of the things that Shungite can do, is actually reverse that from uh, anti-clockwise to clockwise. 
and that's part of the protection. So by wearing, um, having shungai on you, or ne- or pendant, or um, surrounding yourself with it, um, you're actually uh, negating the effect of the um, the signals. Now we've had a lady down the uh, down south of Ireland called Delia, and Delia is in her eighties. And she suffers from hyperelectric sensitivity. Mm-hmm. And she really suffers from this really, really bad. And we've been helping her out, you know, phoning her up and, you know, giving her a few, you know, uh, tips and sending her information. And so what we uh, managed to do is uh, one of our guests sent her down a Shungai starter kit. It was sent over from the States. And then we sent it down to her. And then we rang Delia and told her um, about the kit and stuff like that. So Delia took it out of the packaging. And the first thing she did was she took the one of the, does it heart with shungite on it, and it's a, a fridge magnet, and she put it on the fridge. And she said, in half an hour of putting that on the fridge, she said she noticed a difference straight away. And when she started taking out the other shungite bits and using them, she said mm-hmm. it does definitely a positive difference. She said it has made a difference. She she said it's not perfect, but she said it's definitely made a difference to the fact that she actually contacted. Um, Nancy Hopkins was the lady we spoke to and she ordered more bits off Nancy to help her out so she is feeling better with uh, with, the, with the shungite regarding the electric sensitivity now that obviously applies to 5G and Wi-Fi and everything else and they're the best people to test this, this stuff out on because you'll either get yes it's working or no it isn't because they'll know straight away and we got good results from Dahlia and I'm sure if there's other people out there or if you have people, for the listeners, if you have friends or family who are suffering from uh, electric sensitivity, um, consider getting some shungite in the house um, to help out on a pendant and uh, or anything that you can wear. You know, maybe just w- wrist straps and stuff. There's all different kinds of stuff you can get with shungite to reduce the effect of uh, the, the, the signals. But I, I don't know whether you've looked into shungite at all, Walter. I, I've only um, just glanced at it, um, but uh, as I say, I have another thing on my on my mains coming in, which I I got years ago, which was a copper pipe that contains um, positively charged water ions, and um, you know from a well. And this this pipe is is done in a pyramid type swirl. You know, you put it on your mains and it changes supposedly like just as you're saying how the water swirls and comes out. Now, I've had it on for years, so I haven't really questioned it any further than that. The guy who invented it um, actually gave me one. So I've just had it on the thing. But there's other things out there, I'm sure, that'll that'll help, especially with electro hypersensitivity. Certainly screening would be a first. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, <coughs> Walt as well. Walt gave us a device that we've put on our electricity um, pipe coming in. And I'm, I, to be honest with you, I, you know, I'm looking at the bills that we're getting and I haven't really seen much of a difference in the billing. Um, and I'll have to contact Walt and speak to him about it and maybe get him back on the show and just say, I'm not seeing a difference. Um, but it's supposed to have an effect on the energy as well and reduce your, your bill by about 20 or 30 percent. Um, I mm, I don't know. I'm looking at I'm looking at my electricity bill at the moment and saying, yeah, I, I don't think it's actually doing what it says on the tin. But I could be wrong, you know. But that's I'm just looking at the bill. I'm, I pay the bill, so you know I I can see what's going on there. But um, yeah, maybe maybe we've used more electricity because the 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 winter's coming in, or you know it's getting colder, and we tend to put the heating on a little bit now more so than we did a few uh, a couple of months ago. And uh, maybe that's the difference. But yeah, all these things that if the more I just think the more you can do, um, the 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 less chance you have been affected by it. Well, of course. But the 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 main thing we should all be doing is is taking on these civil servants who are doing this to us. Why should we be fighting all these different issues and getting things like uh, you know a helmet to protect our heads from this, when in fact it shouldn't be here in the first place? Like five G should never be allowed. Uh, the science is very strong, and yet here it is being promoted by civil servants uh, mm. who are doing this for industry. Yeah, uh, we, we, they've got to be taken down. There has to, they have to be made accountable. They're taking our money. They're mm. they're living in our buildings. They're eating our food. Mm. For heaven's sakes, you know, you, you wouldn't keep a dog that did this. We got to we got to take these guys down. Well, they're spending our money. That's it. They're spending public money. That's why they don't care. 
Steve, no. what's your experience with the Shungite? Well, look, and all that? Um, well, with the Shungite jet, I carry it around. I don't know if it's making a difference. And in all honesty, mm. I haven't a clue. I yeah. don't know. Um, but I'm happy enough to carry a small piece around with me, and I have a, a small, I have a, a couple of pieces uh, around the house at home. Uh, are they making a difference? I don't know. Again, I mean, if there was a way of measuring it, you know, some way of testing it. Um, other than that, we just have to take people's, you know, take 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 what the, the information at face value and use use our own discernment. Uh, you know, that's all we can do. But I mean, in relation to the likes of 5G, and look, just type, go, go, go on to a search engine, type in 5G, and you have to, you will actually have to put in 5G dangers of, or dangers of 5G, to find out some information, because it's, we, we now know that um, certain search engines uh, are using uh, algorithms to suppress some of the information. So any any of the stuff that you that will be related to the dangers of five G or whatever it may be are starting to get pushed down the rankings. Uh, maybe not immediately, but it is happening. We've heard, we heard this a couple of weeks back. Uh, so you go onto a search engine, type in five G, and all you will find out is all the benefits of five G and how great it's going to be and how it's just going to revolutionise the whole thing. Like. Um, and I mean, we we like we we already know that, and it says here, network providers around the world are already gearing up to test five G networks throughout 2018. That's this year, uh, with the first five G ready smartphones expected to be released early next year. That's 27, 2019, and we're nearly there. If everything goes to plan, the idea is that five G will bring us broadband equivalent download speeds over mobile networks. And put it this way. You have a, a, a teenager who's addicted to their smartphone, and you tell them um, this is going to give you broadband equivalent download speeds over your mobile network. However, it's very dangerous, and it's going to kill you and cause cancers and this, that, and the other. What are they going to hear? They're they're going to hear broadband speeds <coughs> over download, uh, you know, download speeds over network. So I mean, it's gonna, it's I think it's going to be rolled out. It's going to be one of these uphill struggles. How can how we can win? I don't know. Unless it can be won uh, in the courts, but even at that, I mean, even if it's won in the courts, you're still going to have people stomp on their feet and scream, and we want five G, you know, because that's that's what they want. Well, that's what they're told they want. Yeah, well, I think uh, you see, this is going to be millimeter millimeter waves. That's what it is. Um, they when they first brought out the first body scanners, they were millimeter wave, and they had to withdraw them. I mean, people got hurt. Um, And if this thing, uh, for any reason, um, there was a power shortage, it would do a surge and it would burn a hole in somebody. I mean, they had to stop these in airports. There isn't any millimeter wave scanners anymore in the airports. They've been taken out. Uh, But that was the first uh, thing that was was done to the public. These airport scanners are quite dangerous, I think. And there's a new thing that has just appeared uh, because I was in Holland um, only a couple of weeks ago and they had a new device. And the guy said, uh, you'll have to go through this. And I said, oh, I, no, I'm not going through a full body scanner. He says, well, this is this is perfectly safe. And I said, well, if it's so safe, then I don't need to go through it. And I'm, I'm not going to go through it. So I said, um, you're going to have to pat me down. So th- that's what they did. They patted me down. They let me walk around the thing. Um, but there's some new device they have, which isn't the same as the full body scanner where they put their arms up and so on. Now you take a different pose like Superman. And then they take another shot of you with something else that he said is sound waves. Heaven knows what this is. Um, we're not meant to be exposed to any man-made smog from any of this stuff. And it's all penetrative. And the fact that it penetrates says it's doing damage. Yeah, and it's all, it's all man-made. It's not found in nature. And anything no, that's not no. found in nature is going to be bad for us. Of course it is. Um, I mean, that's what always turns up. And industry always claim it's safe. Government always claim it's safe. That's why we got thalidomide. You know, that's why we got BSC, CJD, you know, everything. They just keep saying this tobacco, you know, I'm uh, I'm just it's safe. I'm just amazed, Walter, at people that every uh, we have we have the cervical cancer, you know, issue down here in in the Republic. Mm And um, the amount of women that was, uh, I believe, was told that they were clear and they weren't. Um, and obviously the, the government are in deniability or they're refusing to make payments, wherever they're doing. But every government we've had, every government we've had, there's always been something, some kind of scandal or something. And mm-hmm. people just seem to have a very short memory 
and they just go, I should, the next government will be fine, they'll be fine. And this has been going on for years and years, and yet they still believe the BS from the government. Yeah, I mean, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, don't expect a different result. Mm. Um, and they wouldn't let us vote if it worked. Yeah, well, again, you know, it's not the people who vote, it's the people who count the votes, as we say. And down here in the south of Ireland, you know, when the, the voting is done, they don't, they don't start voting straight away, uh, or counting the votes straight away. What they do is they ship them off to a local, you know, guard station or storage unit, and then the next day or something... Yeah, they sit there overnight, they sit safe overnight and, and secure. Safe as sound, and nobody interferes with them whatsoever. Yeah, right. Okay, we believe that. And then people just accept it, you know? Yeah, I know, I know. Well, there is some hope, I think, on the horizon as far as justice is concerned, because there's a couple of things that have just happened. I, well, to my knowledge, have only just happened in the last six months. One of them is uh, what have sprung up in Scotland and down in London are common law courts, a whole series of them. And people are taking their complaints against government, against public agencies against your whatever, your tax man or whatever, and they're taking it into common law courts. And what happens in a common law court, which is 100% different than what happens in the fake court that we're now faced with, is in the fake court, you're faced with just a judge, right? Yeah. And uh, I remember seeing is that uh, Richard Lloyd, Roy, uh, Lloyd Barrett or something, some uh, a guy you have down south? Richard Boyd Barrett. That's it. Yeah. And he was on YouTube um, giving a talk about how judges are picked by the Masonic uh, Lodge. Um, so all judges are picked by the Masonic Order. That's what he says. And he had all these um, uh, names and w how it's all happening and how they're picked and uh, so on. And all done in secret. And, of course, they have to swear allegiance probably to the, uh, to the Masons. I don't know. But uh, the, the fact is... When you're faced with just a judge, that's not what the law is, is supposed to be. Magna Carta in 1215 said that every trial, no matter what it's for, even a traffic violation, should have a, a jury of your peers. Mm. So that you're not being judged by a guy who could be influenced by a, a, a brown paper envelope. You're getting, your, you're getting 12 people of your peers who may even know you, and then they'll understand uh, the the whole ramifications of what you're talking about. Whereas mm. when you get a a judge, you're getting nothing. You're getting a judge and jury and one guy who can be bought. Yeah, exactly. Now well, I, w w I will say that in a few weeks' time we are going to have a good guy on from uh, the states called Cal Washington, who's oh um, yeah, I know Cal Washington. Well, I don't know him, but I mean I've, I've yeah. watched a video. Well, well, he's going to be on uh, the show or just arranging a date with Cal to come on. Mm. And he's involved with the in power movement about yes. how the system works and mm -hmm. the difference between common courts and uh, corporate courts. Let's call them corporate that's courts because that's what they are. So, Cal, I'm just we're just arranging a date. So that's going to be an interesting show for people who are interested in the legal side and how things are set yeah. up. And uh, Cal's going to uh, hopefully come on and educate us to uh, what uh, what the real courts are all about. But we have loads of questions come in for you, uh, Walter. So sure. um, before I pass over to Steve, I'll just I might as well just ask you this one. This is mm -hmm. from Timothy, and he said, "Could you ask uh, Walter if all of Northern Ireland water is totally free from fluoride? I live in Ported Down, and would like to know also the whereabouts of spring water wells in Northern Ireland. The only one I know is in Monaghan, and that's too far for me to travel. It's impossible to get clean drinking water on an island surrounded by water. It's a joke." Um, and he said, "Are you just familiar with?" Uh, Gerard Global Meditation. Uh, I, uh, Gerard Global. I think, uh, yeah, Gerard, um, yes, we've heard, um, if it's the guy I'm thinking of, we have uh, heard about him. But yeah, if you want to talk to him or uh, do you want to answer the question about uh, spring water in, uh, he lives in Portadown. Yeah, I, I don't know in his area specifically, but there's bound to be because every farmer here dropped wells for one thing. And then there's a lot of farmers who are, who are getting natural springs coming up, and they still have them. Um, so it's just a matter of going, I would say, to the Farmers Union or something like that and starting to talk amongst and even put an ad in the Farmers Week, uh, you know, and start asking. Uh, go out on social media and ask. There's, there's bound to be there because there are in my area. 
you know um there are natural springs that are that people have access to in their own yards um because they were put in hundreds of years ago you know before yeah. we had the DOE taking over the whole water supply yeah so um most farms in in, in northern ireland have now been put on to the mains if they can do it uh, but there's still a, an awful lot of them that are on um underground water Okay, that's, um, that's interesting. Okay, we're going to pass you over to Steve, and Steve's going to fly through the questions with you. Sure. Okay, uh, where to start? We'll start with Joan's question first, Walter. She's just wondering if you're going to be attending the Open Minds Conference in Waterford this year. Oh, did, I didn't know you were having one. I'll take that as a no, so. <laughs> yes, there is. It's going to be, uh, it was actually supposed to be earlier on this year, but then we had that big heavy snowfall, and that kind of put the kibosh on it, so it would say it's now happening in November. I think it's the 3rd and 4th. Uh, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of November. I'm surprised, hmm. I'm surprised you weren't asked. Hmm. Maybe next year. Yeah, but it'll be on anyway. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure if you're, if you're, if you're knocking about, you know, you maybe there might be a free slot, you never know. Anyway. Um, right, question for Walter. This is from Graham. Uh, Graham says, does Walter consider putting in a valid risk assessment to obtain a public liability insurance certificate from the council who sanctioned 5G rollout in our public places? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as I was saying on the last time I was on your show, you should be asking even in your schools where your kids go. They're, they are required by law to do a risk assessment for any new technology that comes into the school. And no school in Northern Ireland has done one. And yet it's a legal requirement of the principal. It's not even of the of the Board of Ed. The Board of Ed are required to do it as well, but they put it on to the principal. And the principal is required by law, uh, by statutes, to do risk assessments on any new technology. And certainly um, Wi-Fi in a school, is a new technology, and there's no proof of safety. So, yes, you ask of the council, you ask for their risk assessments. You'll find they don't have any because nobody has done any risk assessments. They're too afraid to. They know what the results are going to be. There's no way that this technology would even be available if they ever did any safety testing. So you don't ask the school, you ask the council. Well, you, could, you ask the school as well. You ask mm-hmm. everybody who's got, uh, who is a public body. Mm-hmm. They're all required because, of course, when you go into the council offices, you're being Wi-Fi'd. Yeah. Uh, you go into the public library, you're being Wi-Fi'd. Mm. Shouldn't and, they have a risk assessment for this? And, of there, course they should. and there is a law down here, down south as well. Um, I've seen it on the website saying that they, by law, companies are required to have a risk assessment. Um, for, yeah. for, you know, for technology. Yeah, and in fact, I've been helping a family up here. Um, the, the husband became electro-hypersensitive from work uh, because they had a, a number of routers in the office with them. And over the course of a, a number of years, he started getting symptom after symptom, got worse and worse. But when he went home, he had none of this technology, and suddenly all the symptoms disappeared. And that happened every night, and then he started getting sicker in work. So he brought it to the boss, you know, it's the it's the uh, Wi-Fi unit. So uh, they said they'd turn it off, and of course they told him they turned it off, and he he could feel it. So he knew they they hadn't turned it off, and he had a meter, and he showed them that they were obviously pulling his leg. Mm. You know, it hadn't been turned off. Um, in the end, he had to leave that job uh, because they they totally were afraid of lawsuits over health and safety that they hadn't done. You see, and they know that's where this is going to head. Um, And that's the problem that we're facing here. The principal, she takes all legal and financial responsibility. It's not the education board. They've offered it to her for free. If she takes it, then the legal financial responsibility goes to the principal. Mm. And so it's the principal you sue, and it's her house and her finances that are on the line. She just doesn't know that. Principals are not being told this. They're just being offered Wi-Fi for free, and they, they assume that the uh, government is standing behind them and that they take the hit. But that's not the case. And that's the other problem. No school in Northern Ireland now has insurance because they cannot insure Wi-Fi. No insurance company will cover Wi-Fi. So they can't get insurance on the schools. Mm. 
how crazy this is. So we're putting in a really risky technology. Um, and yes, the council is also responsible because, again, they're a public body. They're required to have health and safety regulations uh, to meet them. And one of them is that you have to do risk assessments for any new technology or anything that's released to the public and even their employees. So, so I mean, <clears throat> asbestos, you can't – you have to have a risk assessment for asbestos for every building. So you, so we could go to the local council in our county council yes. and bypass the school or go to the county council and go, my son or my daughter is in such and such a school and <laughs> can you send me uh, under the um, Freedom of Information Act your um, uh, your your uh, the information regarding um, the uh, safety of Wi-Fi in your school, your risk assessments, and then uh, they obviously will my fob us off and say they don't have one or whatever. So we'd have to follow that up. Well, the, again, the council isn't in charge of the schools. Yeah. Um, the schools is the education authority, and okay. you'll find, or the CCMS, which is the Catholic maintained schools mm. up, up north here. That's what we have. Mm. It's either them or it's the education authority. Both of them are required by law to have risk assessments for Wi-Fi. Mm. None of them have it. Mm. We've asked all the questions. We've been through the parliamentary questions. We've been through the Freedom of Information uh, none of them have it, and they've had to admit it in the end, but they haven't done them. They're required to do them. The problem we're faced with is how do you enforce this? How do you make them do it? You know, the only thing we can do is to sue a principal, and that's what I'm trying to encourage happening right now, because in Northern Ireland, the largest teachers' union in all of Europe have backed uh, this campaign to try and get risk assessments and to try and get a school to be held responsible. And they've actually put out now um, information to principals about how harmful Wi-Fi is. So this, this trade union is on the move, and I'm hoping to see them maybe carry a lawsuit, along with there's a family uh, parent uh, who took the kids out of school here, only mm -hmm. about uh, three minutes' walk from our house. They took uh, their three kids out of school, over Wi-Fi. And all it does, it takes one lawsuit to be successful. That's, that's all yeah. it takes. That sets the precedent and then that's it. And then the rest, that's it. They say get rid of the, the Wi-Fi. Um, it's to little mind, uh waiting to happen again, I think. Um, oh, for sure. You know, it's, a, it's an explosion. It's a, it's a ticking time bomb. Um, Steve, Mike, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Dougie, uh, Dougie's over there in uh, Glasgow. And he says, uh, we should ask for the generic risk assessment. He said, I have done council generic risk, risk assessments. It does not contain anything about Wi-Fi. And that we should be asking for that. And uh, just when we're talking about the insurance, I just want to mention too that when we send our children into school, we are required uh, here, I don't know if it's the same everywhere, it may well be, but we have to pay for obviously the usual things, but we also have to pay, I think it's 20 euro for the year for insurance for our son or our daughter uh, while they are in the school. So actually, that's something I will, I'm going to follow up on that as well. I only thought about it, about it now. Um, but I'm going to check that out and find out uh, this insurance company and find out what is their, what's, what's the, in their policy in relation to damage from Wi-Fi. Uh, so yeah, I will, I will check that out and, uh, see where we can uh, where we can go with that um, and uh, again like I, like I said I don't know if everyone has to do that but I know once the child is on the school property they are insured uh, against an accident so um, yeah it might be worth just checking out if, if you if but when you're sending in your school fees for your children that if you did happen to pay um, for insurance uh, I don't know is, is that the same up there would you know Walter I don't think so, but uh, even if it even if it is or not, it's not about insurance because, sure, if your kid gets a brain tumor, what use is insurance? You know, yeah. this stuff shouldn't be here. That's all there is to know. This should not be here unless they have safety studies, and they have none. And uh, Swiss Re, Lloyd's, Lloyd's of London have refused to insure uh, wireless uh, technology. So it, all the underwriters are refusing to insure this. And that's why our schools up north have all lost their insurance. Not, they don't have insurance up here now. Yeah, I actually, 
I remember, Walter, you did tell us before that you were at a conference and people were, were, were promoting, uh, I'm not sure if it was Wi-Fi, but I think it could have been just uh, GSM, the cell phones. And I know you, you, you asked a couple of people to uh, sign a document, basically. Can you tell us about that again? You asked them to yeah, sign a document I, and they wouldn't. Yeah, I, I, I used to carry it with me all the time, which was a, um, a certificate of responsibility, which said... Uh, I can, I can uh, I sw- uh, you know I know or I can prove that uh, Wi-Fi and wireless communications are totally safe, and I can make all, uh, all that science available to you on request. Uh, but should anybody take any harm, I'll take full legal and financial responsibility for such harm, and I waive all indemnity offered to me by virtue of my position. And then I, I would stand up at these meetings with uh, with either a mobile phone company, that's usually what it was, um, their PR agencies and everybody else. Um, I once stood up at one with, uh, I think there was seven or eight of them, and uh, I held up the certificate. I read it out. I said, you're just after telling the public sitting here that this is perfectly safe. Well, if it's safe, I expect you to be man enough to sign a document that says it's safe and put your put yourself on the line. So, of course, they all refused. Nobody would sign it. And yet here there was uh, eight of these people, and none of them would sign the document. So I used that all over the place because that's the way to show the public quickly that they're lying. Because it can't be safe. It's not possible. You can't pump pulse microwaves, which don't exist in nature, 24 hours a day into somebody and expect no results, you know, nothing to change. It's not possible. You know, every action has a reaction. That's a basic law of physics. So you can't pump pulse microwaves full body radiation on people and expect no re- reaction. And in fact, now the World Health Organization, who've classed, this is another thing, the World Health Organization have classed all this wireless technology as a, a, as a 2B probable carcinogen. They're now about to upgrade it to 1 it's a carcinogen because the man who was in charge of this uh, this um, level that they set, this this uh, 2B, he's now convinced that this is 100 percent provable. It causes tumors and especially brain tumors. And so they're pushing now uh, for and the World Health Organization is considering it, upgrading it to a one, which is just it's a carcinogen, which is what it always was. Now, there's, there's going to be a difference in the speed that it does harm to you because the 5G is coming along. And believe me, if you're putting up 300,000 mass, you know, this is going to be extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary, because that's 300,000 times the radiation you were now getting. <clears throat> yeah. you, you, can't, you can't help but get something catastrophic coming out of this. Mm. They know it. Yeah, they know it. it's scary stuff. And actually, Joan just just said as well. And this is this is an interesting. It's it's more of a comment than a question, I suppose. Sure. Uh, Joan was talking about dwellings having Wi-Fi. Maybe people may or may not know the dangers. And she wonders how would that sit uh, with say health insurance or home insurance. And um, that's that's interesting too. So maybe maybe mm-hmm. people should contact their health insurance or their home insurance and just say, yeah, I've got Wi-Fi in the house. Um, is that covered if someone gets sick? Is that covered under my policy? And just see what they say. That will be interesting if everyone listening to the show done that and just asked who uh, you know your 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 insurer uh, is is it is it included in your policy? Is it covered? Because obviously from what we're hearing, everyone's going to say no. Yeah, I don't think you'll find any. Um, we couldn't. And uh, in fact, the uh, principal at the school that we're we're looking into attacking. Um, we asked for her, all of her insurance, and she said, oh, yes, we have it. When we asked for, could you send us the paragraph or whatever it is that covers you, there was none. And, and we had to track that down with her with through Freedom Information Act questions and, um, you know, uh, writing into her. But there's no, there's no insurance company. We couldn't find any insurance company that would cover this, you know. Um, I think that this is the biggest uh, indicator of how dangerous this is. Because if an insurance company won't cover it, you know they'll cover for virtually anything. Yeah. You know, but they won't cover for this. And, and you're telling me this is safe. But unfortunately, well, I mean, what, what I kind of find disturbing is uh, Walter is the fact that since the kind of the rollout of the GSM network, people kind of mm-hmm. looked into that, and, and even back then, people uh, knew the, the possible dangers of the GSM network, and then obviously it went mm-hmm. to. 
um, you know, 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. And I mean, we don't seem to be learning anything. I mean, uh, uh, from what you, you've said to us here this evening, uh, some people who dare to speak out will be will be silenced and if they're not silenced they'll be threatened that they will be silenced or family members i mean it, that's obviously the level that it's at and it, it, it seems to me like it's coming and 5g is coming whether we like it or not and it looks like that there's bugger all we can do about it because uh the people who are responsible or who have their hand in this pie mm-hmm. uh, are up, up, up the very very top of some big pyramid somewhere and uh, it looks like that you know we're we're just kind of cannon fodder, I suppose, collateral damage down the bottom. Well, it's going to be radiation everywhere. You're going to have your 5G. Then you're going to have your smart meters. Then you're going to have your water meters. Then you're going to have your mobile phone masks around the place. I mean, it's just we're going to be bathed in radiation 24-7. Sounds right. like, a, sounds like a, a, an experiment, a medical experiment. Mm. Oh, it is a medical experiment on a scale we've never seen before. And the lab rats are your children. Um, you know, they're more vulnerable than adults. They have a thinner skull. They have a thinner ear. Um, they, they're they uh, more absorbent uh, because they're younger, and they're in a developmental stage. They're not fully formed. While they're not fully formed, that means they can be interfered with in their growth. Um, mm-hmm. it, it means their cells can be interfered with, and that's what these signals do, unfortunately. You know, people don't want to hear this because they love the equipment. They love their mobile phone, you know, and kids are addicted to them. And, and uh, like Microsoft and, and all these, uh, a whole bunch of the companies, I don't know if it's Microsoft, but a bunch of the companies have admitted that they've made them addictive on purpose. Yep. So that they actually give, they give a, a dopamine rush to the child. There's a book you could get called Glow Kids. It's a great read. It's called Glow Kids. I can't tell you the name of the doctor who wrote it, but um, he takes you through the the addictive part of all of this and how bad this is for children um, to to such an extent that you wouldn't believe it, what's happening in America and other places where this is all being uh, played out, you know. But you know, I was over at a friend's house who had two of the most docile children, really well-behaved, beautiful children, well brought up. And I was over there one day, and suddenly... The mother says to this uh, little boy, you've been on that, uh, that game for, for two hours now. We, I'm going to have to turn it off. You know, he went absolutely ballistic, screaming, yelling. He knocked stuff over. He cleared the table. I mean, I never saw anything like it. That's from being a normal, placid child. He went to this, like, you know, Hitler type kid. It was just this extraordinary to watch. They actually um, did this, Walter, with that super nanny. And they actually um, got kids to do the same thing. They got like, I don't know, 40 kids. And they had 20 in one room, which were playing with normal toys. And mm-hmm. they had the other 20 in the other room watching um, games and playing mm-hmm. games and watching these violent, violent uh, not so much violent movies. Now, they got the permission off the parents, but violent-ish. And then they, they had a psychologist and he, the psychologist would interview all the kids one by one. And he'd accidentally on purpose knock over um, uh, like a, 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 a pens in a pen holder on the table. Mm-hmm. And he said in the majority of cases, the kids that were playing with normal toys and not near the actual computer games actually had some empathy and leaned over to help them pick up the pencils. Mm-hmm. Where the other group of kids didn't have any em- empathy. Very few of them actually went to help. Which was proven the point, and she was blown away by this, the super nanny, and she was blown away to the fact that she couldn't believe that this is what the games are doing. It's taking away kids' empathy. It, it, it's desensitizing them. Yeah, totally, and it's it's addictive behavior because it releases the Chinese call it uh, digital hero or digital cocaine, because when they do readings of the blood of of children who are playing on the game, they get the same dopamine rush. As a as a, a cocaine addict, mm. their their blood blood reading is the same as a cocaine addict. Now mm-hmm. you can imagine trying to take the needle away from a cocaine addict. What his, his reaction is going to be? It's not going to be good. Yeah, um, that's the same with children. They're yeah. no longer your child. They're an addict. Okay, they're, we, they're addicted. We have more questions for you there. We try and get them in, Steve. Yeah, so, I just want to agree with what you're saying there, Walter, in relation to um, the games. They are designed to be addictive, and pe- yes. the people I- I- if they weren't. Then you know, not, not they wouldn't sell. They w- well, actually, they don't even have to sell them anymore. You no. know that there's a game 
Yeah. Excuse me, there's a game online at the moment. It's free. Okay, you can buy skins and all this thing for it, but the game itself is actually free. And um, I, I know a lot of people are familiar with it, and anyone who has children, ask them if they've ever played Fortnite. And uh, chances are they have, because it's free. And the whole game appears to be just going around killing people. I think yeah. I think it's this case of you might you may start off with a hundred people or whoever ho- however many people may be playing and it's a case of you just go around killing 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 until there's only one person left and then you're the winner so you know and obviously th- this game can take hours to play and yeah. uh, I know my son has been addicted to it Walter and it was a case of this I mean I, I I'm nodding my head when you were saying this because uh, he's normally a very kind of placid child and once he's once he's has that Xbox controller in his hand um he's he's quite happy playing his game but you know um, when you do ask him to kind of come off and do something else like he was asked very recently just to tidy the room because the room was uh, a little bit messy um uh, with crisp wrappers uh, uh on the floor and I kind of asked him I said you've got two choices you can clean the room or I said I'll take the Xbox and he went from not to 60 uh, something mm-hmm. something that I've never seen before I mean he it was yeah. it was and it it was kind of like what you're saying the drug mm-hmm. addict with the needle and I got yeah. a, I got a fright when I seen that. So myself and my wife had the discussion, and b- uh, based on that discussion, he's now he can still play his game, uh, but it's limited. I think he has a limit of an hour and a half per day, and and that's it. Well, you see, part of the uh, the book is talking about, and also there's another book by v- uh, Dr. Victoria Dunkley called uh, Resetting Your Child's Brain, where she says the only thing you can do is a total fast. You have to get them off this equipment to save them, because. You're giving them addictive behavior. That addictive behavior will then lead on to drug taking, will lead on to taking pharmaceuticals, will lead on to other addictive behavior, smoking, whatever, because you've trained them into addictive behavior, and they're looking for something outside of themselves to get satisfaction. And when you get a dopamine rush like a cocaine addict, um, man, you know, for an 11-year-old or a 10-year-old, can you imagine? That's phenomenal. There's nothing could give you that rush. So normal education doesn't even come close. Normal anything doesn't come close to it. So they end up glued to this stuff. And in the book uh, with the um, glow kids, they actually had a story, just as you're talking about, about a, a, a child somewhere in middle America who stole a car. He had been watching Grand Theft Auto, some uh, some stupid killing type thing, you know, but yeah. you can steal cars. So he stole a car. The police stopped him. They took him to the police station uh, because he was only, you know, like a 10 year old kid. They didn't think anything of it. And they were sort of making out their report. And the kid came up behind the cop and pulled out his gun out of his holster and shot him through the head. He turned and shot one of the other policemen in the room through the head. He then walked outside and shot the guy at the reception desk through the head. He took the keys to the car and he drove home. And when they came to get him, he was playing Grand Theft Auto because they're trained like snipers. They, 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 they roll, they shoot, they aim. The, the machine is actually training them to be snipers. They're being trained for the military yep. here. That's it. And, and, and it's an addiction. You've got to stop them with this. It's not just about limiting their time. It's about stopping them all together. My, my son, uh, Max, we didn't allow any of this equipment. And uh, one, one day the phone rang, and it was the principal of the school, and he said, could you come down and get Max's mobile phone? I said, no, Max doesn't have a mobile phone. Yes, he does. I said, okay, what kind is it? He said, a brand-new Nokia. I'm on my way. I went down to the school. He handed me this brand-new mobile phone. When Max came home from school, I talked to, I showed him brain cancer studies. And, I mean, I had about 50, but I just gave him a few. I read from them, and I said, now, my job is to get you through to 18 in good health. When I had you, I agreed to do this. When you're 18, you can strap one to either ear and blow your brains out if you want. But until you're 18, you're in our house, you're not having this stuff. So after I gave him the talk, I pulled out a, uh, a club hammer, and I smashed the phone in front of him. I thought you were going to say you beat him up. <laughs> no. And, and I said, you can buy as many of these as you want. I've got a hammer. <laughs> if I had a hammer, what? Yeah. If I had yeah. a hammer, there's yeah. a song in there somewhere. Oh, there is a song. Trini, Trini Lopez there. Yeah, I'm yeah. showing me age now. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, no, uh, uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's 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 amazing. I mean, uh, it's desensitizing them. That that chap that you said who went and just kind of robbed the car and then shot people, it's yeah. de- it's desensitizing them to violence as well. And we we've said that before. And anyone uh, who says it's not desensitizing, go look at the statistics. Well, the other thing the book talked about, believe it or not, all of these games are uh, most of them, almost all of them, are produced in Sweden. And what do they do in Sweden? They get the top psychiatrists and psychologists from from around Europe. They bring them to their lab. They strap the kid in. And they, they get some volunteer kids. They strap them in, and they attach electrodes all over him. Then they show him the game. He plays the game. If they don't get a reading of, of cocaine out of him, they redesign the game till they get his heart rate going so high, his brain going almost into being fried, that's what they do for every game because they need to get the they need to get them buying and demanding this stuff. So they they're making them so addictive it's beyond belief. And people this is going to catch everybody by surprise, I think. The addictive nature of this stuff and that's aside from by the way, the screen is putting out uh, microwaves. Um it's it's doing you harm anyway. Um it's putting out blue blu-ray or blue um uh, light, which also causes skin cancer. So your kid, usually they sit very close to the TV. When I was a kid, my dad was an electrical engineer, and he made us sit 12 feet back from the TV. So that we would be back from the x-rays and the, uh, the, the rays that came off the, the screen. Now, the screens of today are far more powerful than the screens that I had as a kid, even your TV set. When they brought in digital, the, uh, if you looked at the wattage output, it doubled to go to digital. So that means the radiation doubled as well. So this stuff is getting a lot stronger, and then it's blue. It's in the blue field, whereas, you know, the old incandescent lights were, were yellow. Now the new digital ones and the new fluorescent ones that you're getting, the economy ones, they're in the blue field. Now, I was told by scientists in, um, in, in America and also in Sweden not to get those bulbs. So my house, I went out and stockpiled the regular bulbs. I don't care about saving a few pennies on electricity when you're talking about skin cancer, you know, or some other kind of cancer. It's just not worth it. Um, but they're trying to force this on people. And also the blue light interferes with melatonin production, which then means you, you know, you think it's daylight. So it keeps you up. Yeah. You sleep worse. So your your overall health is dropping, and there was a uh, school in California where they they actually cut the um, the windows. They put uh, the screens down on the windows, and they had the kids for the most of the year on the artificial fluorescent lights. Almost the entire class came down with leukemia at the same time. It hit the news big time in America. This was years ago, and the solution was to open the windows to let the normal light in. Because the fluorescent lights on their own cause cancer. That's that's what came out of that. Now, and um, I'm telling you, we haven't even looked into the electromagnetic field around the, um, the 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 joystick that they're using. Most of these things are now wireless. Yep. Which means there's signals all throughout the house for him playing a game. So he's being exposed to microwaves, which can cook a piece of meat in a matter of seconds. It's the same frequency, 2.45 gigahertz. It's the same frequency as a microwave oven. Now, and you're expecting him to stay healthy. How's that happening? How's he going to possibly stay healthy? And then he's getting an addictive personality out of this, which will lead on to other addictions. Aside from this one alone, where he'll blow his top if you even touch it, you know. Um, and they have had cases in America, where this was in the book as well, where, where the child actually killed one of the uh, parents or an aunt who was looking after him for taking his, his stuff away from him. So I'm telling you, this is a, this is a, a a huge thing. It's like an avalanche, yeah. and it's it's so new, we don't fully understand it. Yeah. And just like you have, uh, sorry, I shouldn't be cutting you off. Go ahead, talk. No, sorry. sorry, no, I was just I was just going to say, um, just in relation to the the likes of the screens. If you remember years ago, anyone of a certain age will remember years ago, um, when you use computer monitors in the workplace, you had a, a screen that went over them, and then the screen was there was a little cable coming off, and the screen was earthed. That's uh, right. Would something like that be any good for the likes of the TVs today? 
Yes, and and I think that um, you know here's the thing. I I had to give a talk at uh, oh somewhere it was a council, and it was all about this you know um, electromagnetic fields and stuff and microwaves. And um, one of the one of the counselors asked me something. He said something like, you know, he said I heard from the company that there's the same amount of radiation off a television set, the same microwave radiation off a television set, as there is off of a mobile phone mast. And I said, oh, really? I said, have you seen the cable that goes to a mobile phone mast? It's the size of like three Havana cigars. Have you seen the wire that comes out of your TV? It's thinner than, the, it's thinner than the, a straw. <laughs> and you're telling me the radiation's the same? I don't think so. You know, people don't logically think about this stuff, and they assume because it's a television set, it looks just like the television set of years ago, but they've changed. The same as the phones have changed. The original phones were analog, and nobody seemed to be complaining of health effects. As soon as they went to digital, man, went through the roof. <clears throat> and so they're not the same, because one was a continuous flow of energy, and the other, it's, it's, um, it's staggered, it's, it's like pulsed. And because it's pulsed, it has a 317 beat per second, and some of them is even higher than that. Um, that's what happens with the smart meter. People who get smart meters in America stop sleeping. They start getting migraine headaches all the time. And there was uh, two doctors in Texas who actually took this to their electrical supplier and forced them to give them and all the people in, in Houston the option of or Austin of opting out. Well, smart leaders. Well, funny. I think one of the things that Carl Washington, when he comes in on mm -hmm. the show in the from the Empower Movement, I think we're going mm -hmm. to be talking to Carl about this because they're the issues that they're addressing over there on the common law, um, yeah. and uh, the smart meters. Um, so it'd be interesting to um, see what he has to say. But we have a, a few questions here that we want to get mm -hmm. through. Sure. Um, so bear with us there. Um, Go ahead, uh, Steve. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's a couple of things I just want to mention um, in relation to phosphoric acid. This is information mm -hmm. I came across earlier. And it does say phosphoric acid is it's on the hazardous, so hazardous substance list because mm -hmm. it is regulated by the OSHA, whoever they are, uh, and cited by the ACGIH and a few other uh, places, including the EPA. It says this chemical is on the corrosive health, health hazard substance list because it is corrosive. Mm -hmm. uh, and it said most of soda's acidity also comes from phosphoric acid. That's phosphoric right. acid is made from the mineral phosphorus, which is found mm -hmm. naturally in the body. Um, but then this, one, this goes on to say it works with the calcium to form strong bones and teeth. It also helps support kidney function and the way your body uses and stores energy. Okay. So they're, kind of, they're, 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 they're saying it's hazardous, but then they're saying it's great for you. Yeah, well, it's not, the, the good for you is not true. Um, first of all, it's a, it's, a, um, it's a chemical byproduct. It's got all these trace elements. I mean, how much uranium is good for you? You know, we get all of our uranium from uh, phosphate rock. And now, they don't filter this out when they get the phosphoric acid. They, they're not sitting there trying to get the uranium out. They're not trying to get the mercury out or the cadmium out or the chromium out or the lead or the arsenic out. They don't filter this. You're getting a an actual chemical contaminated with all of these substances because it's really just an industrial, uh, probably byproduct, but it's certainly an industrial chemical. It's not a pharmaceutical-grade chemical. You see, if you got a pharmaceutical-grade chemical, there would be no trace of anything in it except whatever they say it is. That's not what this is. And because of that, it's not the same as something that's, you know, in your body. Like this is this it comes with a lot of uh, chemicals attached to it. And also the phosphoric acid has been found to cause bone fragility in children. And that's why there's a lot of calls for getting it out of even um, soft drinks now. But all phosphoric acid comes from phosphate rock. And, and phosphate rock is where we get all our uranium from. It's all processed out of phosphate rock. And you're telling me somehow they're going to get this stuff out? Uh, no. I don't think so. Okay, Steve. <clears throat> yeah, Peter. Uh, Peter's in Australia. Peter's wondering... Uh, he says, a question, fluoride in cert organic food, is it still certified organic if they use fluoride to grow the crop? It shouldn't be. 
It shouldn't be, but you know they they have bastardized. Uh, excuse my language. The the organic in certain countries in America they certainly have. They've stretched the word organic. It's no longer really truly organic. They just if they can cut down on the pesticide, they can class it as organic, which it should have no pesticide in it to be organic. And there's certain things that the that the ruling bodies in these countries have approved that can be used, like a, a certain pesticide that can be used and still classed as organic. So you have to check. You have to find out what the rules are in your country. Um, but my understanding is that uh, no, if it has fluoride in it, and uh, this isn't, it's not good for you, because even naturally occurring. Calcium fluoride, which happens in small, small traces, probably a million, you know thousands of times lower than what they're adding into your drinking water down south, um, it still causes bone damage, even at that amount, uh, because it, it causes it uh, in India at lower amounts than they're putting in your drinking water. You know, it causes bone damage. So it's altering your bone system. It's it's bonding with calcium. That's what it does. See, it's negatively charged, and it's looking for a positive ion to bond with. And calcium has a positive ion, mm. so it'll bond with it. Aluminium has a positive ion, so it'll bond with it. And we've we've heard that also uh, the, the fluoride calcifies the pineal gland as well, which is yes. uh, you know which is which is bad. But we have about ten minutes left, Walter, and I'd like okay. to focus on the positives if we can. Sure. And, um, okay. it, you know, if there's any, uh, if we can talk about yeah. it, um, yeah. because it's, you know, we kind of have a very good idea now, obviously, after, you know, what we've talked about, where the problem is. So what would you recommend the positives are for people? What do we need to do? What do people need to do? OK, are, are we talking about the fluoride? Are we talking about 5G or are we talking about other subjects, too, like justice and things like that? Well, yeah, we, we include all that, because at the end of the day, if you look okay. at the, if you look at the kind of the risk assessment and um, that needs to be done. So that's something that people can do if they really want to pursue the information regarding the schools and the fluoride. Well, people know about the fluoride in the water. So what they do is basically try and get bottled of spring water and avoid the actual tap water. Um, but is there anything else you want to add or embellish? with that information well on on the fluoride um yes you, you get a whole house filter if you can do it you get a, at least a berkey uh, something like that uh, that has filters that will take it out you do what you can um and if you know of a spring go and get it go and get the spring water um that's that's one thing i would do and the other thing i would do is avoid fluoridated toothpaste like the plague um, there's no reason for you to be brushing your teeth with fluoride. It's it's a, it's actually sodium fluoride sold as rat poison in industry. Uh, you shouldn't be using it. Um, on the positive sides of what I would say is that uh, there is a thing called, and you can look this up online, the International Natural Justice Tribunal, which is being run by a guy called Sasha Stone. I don't know if you've heard of this guy. He um, to, yeah, uh, just, we, we, so. we, we have heard of him, and it's probably not what you think. We've been given oh, some okay. inside information about uh, Mr. Stone. Oh, okay. Well, then, uh, when we go offline, you can tell me about it. Uh, okay. But anyway, I've heard about that. And as I say, the common law courts have sprung up across Scotland and England. They've been bringing... Uh, public bodies in and holding them accountable and then they uh, because they won't show up the juries find in the uh, the victims favor and then they put out a court decree then they get marshals to go and collect and it has been happening so that's a positive to me you know there's also the uh, well I guess it's part of the Sasha Stone I'm not sure the New Earth University have you heard of this I haven't heard of that no Okay, the New Earth University is a collection of very um, motivated people from around the world, actually, who are offering their expertise in whatever their subject is. There's a woman there called B.B. Bacchus, who has just signed on as a professor in this New Earth University, and she's talking about common law and what you can do if you get a traffic ticket, how to get rid of it, what you can do if, you're, if they're trying to take you into court, what kind of letter you can write that stops them from actually taking you into court. And it does work. I had somebody here who was being um, harassed by uh, our land and property service over um, taxes. Uh, they said, okay, you're going to court next week. Um, I wrote a letter. The letter went in. They left her alone for a year over that letter. So th th when you challenge this, if you do it properly, 
they can be backed off. Uh, she's teaching a course in it online, and so that's one thing I would bring you to. They're also talking about new energy sources and things like that that they're researching. So they have access to a lot of people with a lot of expertise, um, you know, even on a spiritual end. You know, they're doing meditations online. You know, there's all kinds of courses that they're offering that you can just do online anywhere in the world. I thought it was a great concept. Anyway, and I thought that was very positive. No, that's good. I mean, that sounds interesting. That does sound interesting. You know, any, anything that you can learn that's educational that you can use and the tools that you can use um, is definitely beneficial. And do you have a link for that or a website address for that? No, all I can say is I could probably get it and send it to you, but um, it's called the New Earth University. And if you put that in your search engine... It will come up. Yeah, we actually have a link here. Uh, Dougie is just after giving us a link to that, Walter, so I'm going to pop that up on the uh, on the chat rooms there as well. Yeah, because I think that's these are positive things that are happening right now where people can get information to protect themselves, uh, whether it's uh, and also find out about alternative things that you're not hearing about except on your show. And, you know, maybe ways of getting out of uh, the, the systems that we're stuck in, you know, whether it's uh, finding out about wind power, some new inventions or whatever, they, they have people who are experts in their field who've offered their services for free to be um, professors at that university. So they may be from New Mexico. The woman who's running it, uh, Nancy something, uh, uh, she's from, New, Mex- she's from um, New Mexico, and yet she's running the open, uh, this new university. Um, there's other people, professors, who are from London. There's another one from somewhere else, you know, so they're different parts of the world, and they're all offering their services. And once you join up for this, then you can ask questions, you can, you can do a course, and you're live with that professor. Uh, So I think that's a really positive step forward. And as I say, the common law courts is certainly a way of going, because they can't stop you from forming a common law court. Um, That's what used to happen. They used to have common law courts everywhere in Europe. Yeah. And been quickly done away with because they now have this system where there's just a judge and he's judge and jury yeah well i'd like to see that working uh, down here down south and i'm going to be an open-minded skeptic because we have seen what's supposed to pass as justice down here in ireland oh. and it doesn't even come close to justice well, I've heard that they're, they're trying to set one up in Dublin. I don't know if it's set up yet, but they were they were in the process of setting up a common law court in Dublin. And I would say if they do, one of the things that you can do is, for example, a lot of the fraud that's being done against you is done in the all capital name. Yeah. You know that, yeah. right? Um, that's through your birth certificate. The common law court for free will, will um, allow you to register your birth in the upper and lower case without the Mr. and Mrs. And then you can use that, that you can get from them a, um, like an a, a identification card with your name in upper and lower case. But have, have, Mrs. have we not been down this road before where people go into court and they, they try this and they end up in contempt of court and then locked away for a couple of weeks because um, they, they, the courts just don't recognize it and just see you as a inverted commas free man? Well, I don't know that uh, common law courts are, have been here for a thousand years, you know. It's not something new. A common law court is different because, again, you've got 12, 12 jurors. A decision is made, and it's as legally binding as any that any of the fake courts are making. Mm. That's the problem they're facing. And you'll also find uh, uh, Cal, isn't it Cal that's coming? Cal, yeah. Yeah, that Cal will be going along the same lines as common law courts. He'll have to, because that's how justice was always done before. Yeah. If you, uh, the, only, the only time you get a, a jury now is if it's murder. Yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah and, and that's something that we have talked about before on the show. And um, Cal was actually arrested and, and sent to jail, and he, yeah. he, he learned from that. And um, it's interesting, if you go over to the Empower website, or just type, type in Empower Movement, and watch the video of his story, uh, and what he said to the judge and all that kind of stuff, it's quite interesting. So, having him on the show will be interesting. Um, okay, well, that's, I mean, that's kind of food for thought as well. I'd like to see, is there any video footage of these courts? Is there any video in, in the actual court where we can watch one of these common law courts? Well, 
I know the International Natural Justice Tribunal. They've got them all up in line, but uh, I don't know, if, as you say, if it's genuine or not, uh, but they seem to have it up in line. And they they actually did, which I thought was very powerful, they had two things that, they, that I watched that they heard before actual judges. There's 12 judges sitting there, r- real judges, um, high court judges. And they, they listened to... Um, one was uh, H Boss, the yeah. uh, bank, uh, was the fraud that was committed by them. Mm. And it was the guy who was on the police board who had led the investigation. He was on telling you what their investigation turned up, and then the results, and the two um, heads of H Boss went off to prison, I think, for 12 years, based on his, his findings. Or the the uh, the police findings. Okay. Now, so that was uh, to me a super positive thing, and that only happened uh, about two months ago. So this is all recent. The other thing they had at that same tribunal was they looked into uh, child trafficking, and they had on a police whistleblower. So they're bringing people out of the dark who you wouldn't normally see or hear from, who get suppressed because the media is totally controlled. That's um, the, John Ledger, is it the? Please yes. protective, yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. And and because they've done that, it, it gives him a platform that goes worldwide. And then you can ask questions of your own authorities. You know, like if you know there's a, uh, you know, your child's been taken off of you and he's being put into care, then you can start asking questions of the care facility, mm. you know, because you know that the, a lot of these care facilities may, may be letting kids go out on the weekend for prostitution or drugs or whatever. Mm. Um, that's what he pointed out. So they're highlighting things. Whether this is all legitimate, um, this, as you say, Sasha Stone's legitimate, I have no idea. But I do know that this stuff needs to be aired. Well, the, 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 the thing I will say about it is that the fact it's actually getting out there and people can watch it online is a step in the right direction. I will say that. But listen, Walter, we've reached that time. Thank you very okay. much for coming on. Great information. I'm sorry. I know we, we have a few more questions there, but we won't, loads, have time. we won't have time to get through them. It's just too many questions there. Um, but thanks a lot for coming on and good luck in all the work you're doing. I mean, we will, we will hook up again and meet up and... Um, because we always have a good chat and I know we were saying God what will we talk about today do we have enough material I mean we could go on for another two hours and it's always the same it's always a pleasure talking to you thanks for coming on I'm going to pass you off to Steve and Steve's going to get all your contact details okay yeah thanks Walter yeah no it's it's our, our pleasure uh, Walter to have you on here because you're always uh, so full of information and very informative and uh, un- unlike like there are some people who could probably take the information and really kind of make it very technical, but you kind of you you know like that the common man is listening and you appeal to the common man, and that's why we're getting some lovely comments coming in on the chat room, um, and thanking you for the way you've kind of delivered the information this evening. Uh, so thanks for me as well. Um, but if people want to fo- find out more about what you're doing or what you've been up to, or uh, basically who who is Walter Graham, what is he doing, what is he, what's he, what's he about? Uh, obviously, they can stick your name into a search engine, and they will yep. find information. But uh, any any sign of a website? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I, I haven't even had time. Um, you know, but I, I would say if anybody wants to get in contact with me, you guys have my contact details. They can contact you, and you can send on to me, and I will respond. So if anybody sends in an email, like those questions I didn't get to answer, mm. if 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 you send them on to me, I will answer them, and then you can send them on to whoever sent them. Okay. Or if you give me their email, I'll send it to them directly. But, you know, I'm just telling you. Yeah. Um, and if, if somebody calls up and wants my number, which has happened before, um, you can you can give them the number and let them call me. Once they uh, know I, that you're happily married to Maria. Absolutely. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Well, I, I think giving out the number, you know, could be, I think emails would be better, Walter, than sure. giving out phone numbers, you know. Um, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm here for you. And if anybody has questions and they didn't get them answered, send them in to you guys. And then you send them over to me. I'll send you back the answers. No problem. We, we can do that. Okay, Walter, just stay with us there. We're just going to oh. go off to a musical break. I got bad boys on there, by the way, if you can find oh, it. Geez. I don't know. Yeah, I forgot to say keep to talking, you. Keep talking. It's, it, it was on the actual list there. Uh, um, it's under uh, 2008 there, but I don't know whether you can find it. Oh, you found it. Oh, there you go. Okay, so we played this anyway. Um, we've just gone out to a musical break, and we'll be back after. Back.
This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com and People'sInternetRadio.com. Okay, we're back. Good information there from Walter. As Walter said, you can, uh, like, if anyone wants to communicate with Walter, fire us off an email and we can uh, get you hooked up with Walter. Uh, there were a lot of questions that we didn't get to ask. And I want to apologize for that, but obviously time was against us. Uh, but I have collected those uh, questions because I, I do have them on a spreadsheet here and I forward them over to Walter. So he may answer them. And if he does, then we can give you the answers next week. Brilliant stuff. And uh, bad boys is not really for the, the, the criminals. It's more got to do with the, the people in government and the judicial system and anybody related to uh, criminal activities. That's really bad boys. Uh, what you going to do when uh, we come for you? Well, it could be the common law people. Or it could be, I don't know, maybe the um, maybe uh, other people, the good guys, the white hats will be coming, you know. So we'll see what happens anyway. There's a lot of good stuff going on as well, so we don't want to get all depressed and all down because there are good stuff, a lot of good stuff going on, um, a lot of global stuff going on as well, uh, with weather patterns. I mean, you have the tropical storms going off. We had the uh, Florence in the States, and then we had the other one um, over in um, Hong Kong, um, Man- 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 Mancoot, Mancoot. 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 Um, and it's unbelievable when you see what's going on from a weather pattern. So maybe Goya is changing. Maybe there's upgrading going on. I don't know. It seems to be a lot going on. But uh, I'd just like to have a, a quick shout out to my parents who have a 60 years anniversary. I am 60 years married today. <laughs> And um, so yeah, sixty years—that's a long. Sixty years—that is a long time. That's a long time. So I'm con- still madly in love. Uh, congratulate. Well, apparently it's on the contract. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, happy anniversary to uh, the, to to my parents. Um, now next week we will be um, we're going to have a round table, and Liam is a good uh, good friend of mine, and Liam has been on the show before, and he knows. An awful lot of stuff that's going on. He does journalistic stuff. And he, we had a talk during the week. And I said to him, look, will you come on? And we'll have a round table. And he's going to invite a couple of people on with him. This is the plan anyway for next week. And he's, he suggested one person who's an actual Dublin councillor. Who's very um, um, strong-willed and strong-minded and knows what's going on. So instead of having the normal show, we're just going to have a round table and we're going to give you an update of what's going on in Ireland, the state of Ireland in 2018, especially with the palaver that we had during the week with the Balaclava, um, Gardaí and the, the guys turning up to do the evictions. Um, but that's one of many things that are going on and I'm sure you'll get loads of inside information or just things that are happening that people will not believe. It's unbelievable. So... um so next week, that's the plan of attack anyway. So fingers crossed if we can do that and get the group together and we'll go basically start the show and go straight into the round table and then put it out there and talk about everything that's going on. That's the plan of attack um, for next week. And um, will I go down the road with the mobile phone and Vodafone? I don't know. I'll have a think about that. As to, I mean, the credit was probably only about ten euros, but it's not. It's the principle of the matter. Well, do you know what you should consider doing? I know this. I know this goes against the grain and every moral fibre in your body, but uh, you know the way you have the Joe Duffy show here at one oh, o'clock. Oh God, no! I, I know, I know. Joe but Duffy, call Joe. Just, just call Joe. Just, Joe. just for the hell of it. I mean, it would. If nothing else, I mean, okay. If you want to, if if they're gonna keep your ten euro, don't go down without exposing them. Give, just give Joe a ring. Well, that's what I'm doing on the show you, tonight. I know, I know. But, you know, there's a lot of people cr- across the length and breadth of Ireland who are not hearing this show because, obviously, they're they're still asleep. But if you were to ring Joe, ring the production team in the morning and just explain, just give them a little scenario. I mean, at the end of the day, you could get on, you could, uh, if, if he gets you on live, you can talk about it. And then at the at, at the end, you can you could possibly give a shameless plug for OAM that will be heard. The length and breadth of Ireland. Yeah, right. Okay, that'll be edited out and taken out. Yeah, but see, just, sometimes they do. They do it live. If if you're going to be going on talking about water protest, they'll do a pre-record or they'll have their delay or whatever. But yeah, sometimes you know, sometimes people it, have got on. And this is this is how I feel about doing this, right? If I said to you, Steve, for tomorrow, just for tomorrow, I know it goes against the grain, but have a Big Mac. What way would you feel about it? Well, now, hang on a second. Now, that's, that's how bad it is yeah, for me to go on But that's mainstream different. I mean, a Big Mac, radio. you're asking a, bit, a vegetarian to eat a Big Mac. I mean, 
Yeah. But you ask me to go, <laughs> an alternative media person to go on mainstream media. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm giving up. This is this is me giving up. Right? If anyone else uh, fancies ringing Joe Duffy tomorrow, I'll be in work, so I won't be able to ring Joe. But if anyone else who has a, a couple of minutes in the hand wants to ring Joe, there's an interesting story uh, in relation to Vodafone. Joe Robbing Duffy. the credit. The man that wants to listen to everybody but couldn't give a monkey. He won't do anything. He's, I think he, and he's well paid for not giving he's it. Well paid, sugar. yeah, exactly. Air money, by the way. Air money. Um, but that uh, that's it. That's really what... Uh, what uh, what happened during the week? So what have you planned for next week? What's the excitement for next week? <laughs> Me? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't live an exciting life. Give the, give the listeners the bad news. Tell them what happened today. Go on. I know you didn't tell them. I did say I, I was at a festival today in a local vi- in our local village. Yeah, yes, and tell them what happened. Okay, there's a okay. Well, okay. If if, if you think it makes interest and in listening, here goes. Um, at the local festival in the village where I reside. Or live, I suppose I live everywhere. Uh, but where where I hang my hat, as they say, um, we had a, a festival today run by Mead Potato Company, and they have a, a p- p- potato peeling competition. And in 2015, myself and my wife, no one else was kind of wanted to, you know, when they say, okay, step up for the competition, nobody really went forward. So I stood forward, then my wife stood forward, and then other people, you know, there always has to be one. Um, so we had the potato peeling competition, and there was the, the you know, the, 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 I don't know, the different heats or whatever you want to call it. And my wife won. She won, and she got a lovely trophy. So that was 2015. 2016, uh, we, went to the to the festival again and we both entered along with other people and I won and I got a huge trophy. <laughs> it's the only trophy I ever won. Um uh we didn't do it in 2017 because it was the, the the weather was was very bad. Uh so we done it again today and myself and my wife got through to the final. So there was four people in the final and I'm sure people are switching off in their droves at the moment. But we got through to the final and last year or no two years ago when it was run uh, I was in the final against another chap named Barry, and Barry was peeling frantically. His arms are f- going all over the place, but I was controlled. <laughs> I had full control of my my implement and my potato, um, but he sliced his finger, and the blood was pumping everywhere. So this this year, uh, they insisted that you ha- the the hand wearing the potato, you had to wear a glove. Now I thought it would have been one of these gloves that would have kind of you know gave some grip with the, with the spud, but it didn't. So I'm. 100 miles now you were you said you're watching i was going there 100 miles an hour you you could barely see me hand it was it was like bionic man or something yeah. and uh, i dropped my potato at the like, mere milliseconds to go i dropped my spud uh, and by the time That's age you know it, it, no it's the glove <laughs> it was the glove but before i could actually pick up my spud and resume my wife put her hand up in triumphant uh triumph but she was yeah, yeah she so she won so she beat me yeah. But by a split second. Okay, so but you did get a trophy one year, but you got. I did, yes, year. I did. Okay. I got beaten. But it, the, the trophy staying in staying in our house. So yeah, that. exactly. Okay, so there you go. So <laughs> right, so if anyone out there, yeah. if you know, if you need some pe- potatoes peeled, I'm your man. There you go. Um, yeah, it was it was frantic uh, peeling. I was watching it today. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, fair play to your village that actually being that we talk about community. Um, and fair play to your village to actually get it and do that. I mean, yeah. my village, nothing happens, really. Uh, well, there's one thing happens during the year, but that's nothing got to do with the village. Um, and that's it, you know. Um, but my village, if you, you know, if you close your eyes for a second, you pass it. It's, well, as they say, small. well, as, as I say, it's so small, the speed, the speed limit signs are back to back. Uh, exactly, yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to let you go. Uh, for myself, Alan James, take it easy. Have a good week. If you have any links... Send them in to us. Loads going on from a celestial global level as well. We're going to try and get into that. and We're going to try and get a guest on and talk about that as well and cover that area because there's loads going on with that. So we'll sort something out. But for myself anyway, take it easy. Have a good one. Bye bye. Okay, I want to say thanks. It's been great. And thanks to everyone for joining us this evening in both of the chat rooms. Uh, it's nice to know you're there and tuned in. And thanks for you know in- inviting us into your homes and your minds and your hearts. And uh, anyone listening to the podcast, thank you for downloading. And um, anyone who does fancy visiting the website, if you do actually have a look at our website, there's a lot of great information on there, a lot of great links, uh, podcasts as well. There's also a little donate button on there. So if anyone has a euro or two and, you know, they, they maybe feel like sending it to some good use, uh, well, you can send it our way. If you like, uh, we're not 
going to put the cap out there, but we're just saying, you know, we do have the night button. If anyone does fancy maybe throwing a couple of euro our way, uh, it all goes into the running of the, the, the show and all the associated costs. Anyway, that said, we're going to be back next week. Barry Prince is up next on People's Internet Radio, so stay tuned for Barry. Uh, we're going to cut the stream now, and uh, again, we'll uh, catch it in seven days' time from myself, Stephen George, and all the team here. <laughs> yeah, um, good night. Oh, you know, you know.